Hey, good morning. Welcome to another daily devotion. Uh, actually, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Not sure when you're watching this, but uh, good to have you with us. My name is Dave. I'm a Christian recording artist and a worship leader and a writer of devotions uh, from New Jersey. And we launch these every Saturday morning, so today is no different. And uh, I wanted to talk today about a passage from the book of Matthew. Uh, we have been walking through Matthew in our community uh, over at joindavesband.com. If you want to join us there, you can. Just go to that website, joindavesband.com, and you can get involved. Uh, we've been walking through the book of Matthew for about the last two and a half years. And uh, actually, I think it's been three years. I'll have to look back and see on the timeline, but it's been a long time. And uh, every once in a while, we have these things called daily doses of worship in our community where, where we have these daily devotions that go out every single day to our email inboxes. And I wanted to kind of get back into this a little bit. Maybe when, I, when I'm inside, today I'm inside because the air quality outside is horrible. So uh, I wanted to talk through a few, maybe a few more of these, maybe this week and next week, the week after, not quite sure how this is going to roll, but just talk through these daily doses of worship. These are devotions that go out to our community members in our membership area every morning at 6 a.m. And uh, it's just a great way to kind of start your day. So today we're going to be talking through, I'm getting a little bit of an echo here, hold on. Today we're going to be talking through Matthew 6, uh, just three verses, 31 to 34. Let me read them first. I'll read you what I wrote. Then I found some other commentary that I really like uh, that we can get into as well. But this is what it says. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things are dominant. Sorry. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. We could probably just leave it there and say good night or goodbye, but this is a pretty powerful set of verses. Let me just read through uh, what I wrote for the devotion, and then we'll dig into it a little deeper through some other commentary that I found. Uh, these thoughts dominates the thoughts. These thoughts dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Those words are so, so powerful, right? Let me just go back. So beginning. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows your needs. So amazing. As we begin to develop our faith more, develop our trust, develop our walk with God, looking at a verse like this causes me to think more. God has all of it. He knows all that we need. He knows all that we want, knows all that will happen. It's on us to trust and to have faith in Him. Uncertain days? Question mark? Absolutely. Certainly. Heraclitus, the Greek philosopher, is credited with saying that change is the only constant in life. In the midst of that change, we need to be firmly rooted in a relationship with God so that the change and the uncertainty in that change doesn't overwhelm us. Back to that in a minute. Easier said than done, but seeking the kingdom first seems to be a part of the answer. God tells us that all will be provided. Worrying about tomorrow is not part of the equation. Resting in the confidence that we have in God is part of the equation, actually is the whole equation. Rest easy today, okay? God is with us. God is with you. He's with me. He's in the middle of of it all. Okay, so that was the devotion, but I want to dig a little deeper into this because there's a lot more in these verses than just that little paragraph, right? So, therefore, do not worry, okay? We're invited to know a freedom from the worry and anxiety that comes from undue concern about material things. We can reflect the same kind of heart that Matthew Henry showed when he said the following after being robbed. Okay, this is a quote from him. It's kind of a prayer. Lord, I thank you that I have never been robbed before that although they took my money, they spared my life. That although they took everything, it wasn't very much. That it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. Pretty incredible little prayer to pray after being kind of violated like that. I don't know if you've ever been robbed before. I remember when I was living in New York City, of course, the stereotype <laughs> continues. 
But I remember our apartment was broken into and we were robbed and we didn't have a lot back then. Um, but, you know, it was kind of annoying to have people rummaging through our things and it was just not cool. And I remember the attitude that I had after that was not the attitude of Matthew Henry here. It was more like, what can we do? Can we call the cops? And you know, all this kind of stuff. It was crazy. But at the end of the day, we were thankful because we were like, look, at least we weren't here when it happened and everything was okay. Jesus contrasted the life of those who do not know God and are separated with him with those who know God and receive his loving care. Those who know God shouldn't seek after these things, right? Again, the world, very, very alluring. Very, very, very alluring in what it offers. And God is just telling us continually, don't seek that, put God's kingdom first, right? Verse 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. This must be the rule of life when ordering our priorities, right? It is it is wrong to think that this is just another priority to fit onto one of our list of priorities. Like, it's not like, hey, let's, okay, let's make our top 10 priorities today. And yeah, we'll throw in seeking first the kingdom of God. Maybe that'll make number seven or number eight. No, this is first always, always first. And put it at the top, right? Instead, in everything we do, we seek first the kingdom of God. For example, we rarely have to choose between honoring God and loving our wives and being good workers, right? We honor God and seek first the kingdom of God by being good husbands and good workers. We should always remember this, this statement in its immediate context. Jesus reminds us that our physical well-being is not a worthy object to devote our lives unto. If you think it is worthy that God is mammon, wait, I don't know what that means. Then your life is cursed with worry and you live life too much, like an animal concerned mostly with physical needs. Okay, so let's look up mammon, okay? I love when uh, people use words. Biblical, oh, I got it, got it. Biblical term for riches, often used to describe the debasing influence of material wealth. Got it, okay, that makes perfect sense. God does not rely on material wealth. God relies on everything that he gives to us. Um, Jesus didn't tell us to tell, tell them to stop worrying. Like, okay, so this is a really good point. Jesus didn't tell them to stop worrying. He told them to replace worry with a concern for the kingdom of God. A habit or a passion can only be given up for a greater habit or passion. France says this, What this verse demands is, therefore, a commitment to find and to do the will of God, to ally oneself with his purpose totally and this commitment must come first it's not an afterthought this is a very very crucial point this is not an afterthought this is all of it seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you uh, to put God's kingdom first do not think that your physical well-being is a worthy object okay got it um I just lost my place here. He promises heavenly treasure, rest in divine provision, and fulfillment of God's highest purpose for man. Fellowship with him and being part of his kingdom. That's the thing that we should kind of lean into. Look, this is hard. I'm not saying that this is something I do every day. This is a very hard thing. This choice to seek first the kingdom of God is the fundamental choice everyone makes when they first repent and convert to being a follower of Jesus. Convert, right? Yet every day after that, our Christian life will either reinforce that decision or deny it. There's two choices. One, we just continue to say, okay, I am going to seek first God's kingdom. I am going to seek first Jesus, okay? That's first. Or I'm not. Like we have this choice every single moment of every day. Every day, every morning we wake up. We wake up and what do we do? Grab our phones, right? Do we jump into devotions? I didn't this morning. I'm not better for that I it, usually when I do that it sets the day up properly and when I don't do it I feel a kind of a twist in my schedule so I know that when I get on the road I'm actually heading to a gig tonight uh, when I get on the road today I tend to keep the radio off turn the podcasts off and sometimes I'll sit there and just drive and pray Sometimes I'll sit there and listen to the Bible. I have an app called Dwell. If you don't have Dwell, I highly recommend it. It's a really great app, and it just reads you the Bible. Or I think in version, uh, it reads you the Bible as well. But Dwell is really nice because 
it not only reads you the Bible, male, female voice, all this kind of stuff, but it also adds a little background music to the background, like kind of very meditative, mellow music. So it makes the hearing of the word, just puts it in a different place. I tend to relate a little more to music. So anyway, but that's what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to do that. Like I'll take 15 minutes on the road, whatever it is, listen to a few passages of scripture and just kind of meditate on them because it resets my day. And this is just part of the first step of seeking first the kingdom of God, seeking first Jesus. Prayer, yes. Devotions, yes. Worship, yes. All this stuff. Sharing, yes. Being, you know, good stewards of the word, all that stuff. So anyway, don't worry about tomorrow, it says. For tomorrow will have its own worries. It'll have its own stuff, okay? Tomorrow is so tomorrow (laughs) today is just today so if you must worry worry about today right most of our worry is over things that we have absolutely no control over anyway and therefore it's foolish as well as harmful it hurts our hearts it hurts our minds our psychological being well-being Jesus reminds us of the importance of living for the present day. It is it isn't wrong to remember the past or plan for the future. To some degree both of those are good, yet it is easy to become too focused on either the past or the future and to let the day and its own troubles be ignored. Right? We're so worried about tomorrow that we forget about what's going on today. God wants us to remember the past, plan for the future, but live in the present. Live in the present with him. Live in the present, walking with him every single day. I mean, we talk about this a lot. I think I have addressed this before in some of these devotions, but it's really, really good to just stop for a minute and think about this again and really just meditate on this passage of Scripture. Let me just read it again, okay? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. We know that already. Today's trouble is enough for today. So today my prayer for you, for me, is to just stop, breathe, take a larger breath than we normally would take. Just exhale and let God speak to us in the middle of it all right? And seek him more as we go about our day. Seek him when you're driving. Seek him when you're walking. Yeah, take a minute in the middle of your workday and just stop and say, Lord, thank you that I have this job. Thank you that I can provide for my family. Thank you for my health, right? All of these things, just so, so good to just stop and rest in the Father amongst it all in an attitude of uh, thankfulness, really. So, okay. I'm going to stop there. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Uh, hey, if you want to join our community, please do head over to joindavesband.com and you can get involved there. Uh, we have an incredible library of over 400 hours of content. There's over 2,000 written devotions, I believe, at this point. Um, we send out daily devotions every morning. There's a library of worship videos you can worship with. We do Bible studies every week. There's over 150 hours of Bible studies alone in there. Uh, We have these, an archive of all these daily devotions. We're 17 seasons in. That means there's, I think, 170 or 180 of these types of video devotions as well. Really, really uh, great snippets. Just kind of get started with your day with some of these devotions. So it's just a great library. You can use it on your phone or you can use it on your desktop. And then the best part is when you join our community, the first few dollars of your membership goes straight to helping us sponsor a child and saving a life. We're literally saving lives with our membership so we want you to be a part of our community another great part is that we have people inside that are becoming lifelong friends praying for each other and praying with each other and sharing life together and so if that's something you need as well join us head over to joindaysband.com get involved there uh thank you guys thanks for being here today we'll see you over in our community at joindaysband.com we'll see you on the next one take care